Hello! Today I want to show you a bit of interactive programming. Let's say you want to write an algorithm that calculates sign values. And I find that trying these algorithms out very often is a nice way of quickly getting a solution that works. And to do so, I've built myself a little loop. The loop doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, it just calls calculate um, with different values of uh, with different input values and then it sleeps for a second so each second I get a new test. It's a little bit of an algorithm test bed that I wrote to, for myself. Now the interesting thing about this is going to be this line um, where it reloads the class that I'm going to write and um, this is where the magic is going to happen in a minute. Now I've already prepared all of the code necessary. Let's just start this loop and uh, let's see what the output is. And right away we see that I've made an error. Um, apparently there's a typo in here. Ah, uh, here it is. And let's fix that. I'm going to save this class, I'll save this file in a second, and something interesting will happen. You remember we have this line in here. This line will make it so that we don't have to restart our program. I'm going to leave this console running all the time. But when I save it, it'll be the, the program will be reloaded and it'll be restarted automatically. Let's try it out. All right, it says reloading sign calculator and we get output values. Now, let's implement uh, let's implement a method to calculate sign values by cheating. We'll just use the Python built-in method. I'm going to save the class again. I'm going to save the file again and you'll see immediately that it reloads and produces values. Right. Now this is nice. We can now edit this file and we will see the results immediately. So let's go a step further. Um, we've cheated here. Let's call this calculate cheat. I'm going to call this calculate. Same typo as before. And uh, the thing that each programmer does when writing an algorithm is going to Stack Overflow and on Stack Overflow they show us the Taylor expansion and the Taylor expansion apparently is this x minus x to the third power divided by 6 um, yeah plus x to the fifth power divided by 120 which is 5 factorial and let's go one step further uh, to the seventh power divided by 5040 which is 7 factorial and I'm going to return the result and since this stack overflow, it must be the truth and it must work. Let's try it out. All right, it calculates something. It's definitely not the sign value. Now the problem with this is that the Taylor expansion that is given on stack overflow is accurate only between minus pi and pi. So we have to normalize our value. But before we do that, I really want to give this some output format. I really don't like these numbers. And uh, let's give this an output format with an F string and let's do 9.6 F here which is a nice float format and immediately we get much nicer formatting here um, makes it easier to to see the values in a, in a second All right. we have to um, normalize these values so they are only between minus pi and pi and the first thing we do is uh, we normalize X to um, be between 0 and 2 pi. I mean, we could try this out. Let's put it in the output as well uh, with 9.6f as well so we can see what's happening. And we can see, okay, yeah, that looks, looks good, right? Well, that's, that's nice. Let's see what happens in a second. Okay, yeah, well, that looks good. So far, so good. All right, we're, um, well, well, oh no. Oh, this can't be right. Okay, again, we see the same problem. Uh, from between zero and pi, this algorithm is fine. I think we have too much, um, too much precision here. All right, much better. <laughs> um, between minus pi and pi, uh, between zero and pi, this is fine, but if we go above pi, uh, the values don't work anymore. So let's normalize correctly. If x is larger than pi, we simply say x is x minus minus 2 pi. Let's try this. And, okay, right now, this looks fine. 
let's uh, wait a while and see what happens when we go beyond pi because the Taylor expansion isn't accurate beyond pi so we should see weird values but we can also see whether our normalization works because we've put it into the output and that actually does look good all right now so far we've done a nice bit of programming we have a bit of interactivity but all of this didn't need to do uh, this calculate this complicated reload right we could have just uh, made an import made a re-import um, and re-instantiated this uh, this instance right we didn't actually take uh, we didn't actually use the fact that this is an instance and that this uh, stays the same so what I want to do next is I want to show the difference between one number and the next and to do so um, I'm going to calculate the difference between some last result and the current result. Oops, current result. Right. But to do that, I need to store the last result. So let's do self last res equals res. Let's store this last result. Right. And in here, we're going to do self dot last res equals res. Now this is not going to work because right now. An instance of the sign calculator doesn't have a value in last res. So when I save this, we're going to get error messages. And that is in fact correct, right? We get an error message, has an attribute last res. Because we ha we do not have this, right? We do not initialize this anywhere. So let's take it out again and store it. Now, right now, each instance or the instance that we have of the sign calculator does have a value in last res because it is set in here right so if we could somehow transport this to after a reload that will work but right now it doesn't do that and the reason for that is we have to do it manually so what we have to do is we have to tell the system that actually this last res is important and we want to keep it through a reload Right. So what this, this will do is, when this class is reloaded, each instance will save the value of the last res instance variable, and after reloading, it'll restore that value. Let's try this. Okay, nothing happens. Let's try the diff and put it in the output as well. Again, 9.6f is a good format. Let's try it out. And there it is. And you can see, even in the first line, we already had a difference because the value that we had in here, this last result, was stored and restored after reloading. And this is the actual magic that happens here, right? We can reload this and we can transport state through a reload. Now, you also saw that this isn't a full proxy pattern. This isn't a full abstraction where we just tell the instance to reload, but instead we tell the instance to reload and then we get a new instance. So um, this isn't the full proxy pattern, but it's reloadable, <laughs> as the class name says. So we can reload this code and create a new instance that, um, that helps us here. Now, of course, in our example, this is just a toy, right? We could have done all this by simply re-instantiating every time and um, we could have implemented the algorithm without having the machinery around this. But usually when you implement such an algorithm or when you try to implement a class that does something, you won't have a simple program. You won't have a simple test bed. Instead, you'll have some machine running that has state. You'll have some environment running that has state and that you don't want to restart all the time. And then um, being able to interactively reload parts of your program become very, very useful. And in the next video, I'm going to show you an actual application of that where we have such um, a situation where our spaceship is flying and we want to program a pilot for it. And then we'll need all the interactive features. All right, what did we see in this video? We saw um, that it is possible in Python to reload code um, in a very simple manner. This is something I implemented um, in a few hours. So um, it is possible to, to do interactive programming in Python in a very neat and tidy way. And to make it really useful, we need to 
um, be able to transport state through reloads. And we do this by telling the system which instance variables should be serialized and they will be automatically restored after um, the reload. And that means we can transport state through reloads and um, work with the state even after the class has been reloaded. And this is the actual and real magic um, in the system. Just reloading the code is neat, but that's not um, that's not magic. The magic is we can transport state through these. All right. In the next video, we'll program a spaceship pilot, and um, we'll use all of these features for that. See you next time.